Oh yeah, we hiked up to the top. Good morning from Pittsburgh. I am here in the city and I am so excited to explore this place within the next 48 hours. Get to see all the sights, catch a Penguins game, and just overall have such a fun time here. What is there for me to do? You know, I guess we'll kind of feel it out. Pittsburgh is really much an industrial city, represents the heart of industrial America, specifically the steel industry. So I want to see how that plays out, how if you can tell it within the infrastructure. I'm going to check out Fort Duquesne, I'm going to go to PNC Park, see the Allegheny River. I'm told that by PNC Park, oh my God, it's absolutely stunning, the views. For some reason, I thought there was just going to be one large yellow bridge. But there's one, two, three, a fourth one in the distance. And then, yeah, turning that way, hard to tell, but that one in the distance. There's so many. It just adds such color that I love. The color of the city is black and gold, and it embraces it so well. Every single one of its sports teams, black and gold. The Penguins, the Steelers, the Pirates, and the Riverhounds, which is the soccer team. And everywhere you go, it's just these, it's these colors. I love how much they embrace it. So the reason why it's black and gold is it goes back to its manufacturing history once again. These are the colors of uh, steel, iron, and ore. So yeah, everything is relating back to it. So they're embracing their history. I love it. Even the side railings, and street light embroidering the energy of yellow. It really does feel like we are at the heart of industrial America. You see it everywhere you go. And this is what really built our country. It's the backbone of our country. Blue collar workers, the whole Rust Belt region, but specifically right here, we would not be where we are today if it was not for the hardworking people of this city. So while manufacturing and steel is the predominant labor force here, even today, there has been a boom, especially within the last 20 years in technology and financial services. One of the big companies actually headquartered here, Duolingo, the language learning app. Another famous one is Heinz the ketchup company. The downtown area is really fun. There's a lot of different restaurants or shops, some office buildings, actually a lot of office buildings. And it seems like there's no really like financial district to, and like a different area where tourists go. Actually, I guess Pittsburgh doesn't really get that many tourists, but still it feels like everything is like kind of mixed together, which is something cool I find. It's interesting because it has some Midwest elements and Northeast elements as well. So it provides kind of like a hybrid of that. So at this moment now I'm in Market Square, which I assume that there are different events that take place right here. And you have all these different restaurants that surround here from seafood to Greek food to uh, burgers. You can get so many different things. There's the Fairmont Hotel, literally a block down. So now you know you're in a very high-end area. I picture during the summertime, there are a lot of different events that take place. Maybe some live music too. The cobblestone road in the Market Square, nice touch. This right here is 2PPG Place, which is an office building. Look at how cool the design is. It's almost like a glass castle. This is actually awesome. I assume this is PPG's headquarters. It stretches all around Market Square. This is so cool. It's literally like a glass castle downtown, especially because now it's wintertime, having the ice skating in the center of it. Wow, such, such, such a nice touch. Everything about it. Just, just, it's so cool. Top tier architectural design, whoever did it. 
The waterfront is producing terrific views. I absolutely love it. Starting from one end of the city, the northern part, and we're kind of like going to make our way down, walk along as we get to Fort Duquesne. But we're going to go. PNC Park is right over that way. This right here is all a part of the cultural district. You can see the different bridges, the David McCulley, Veterans Memorial, Fort Wayne, and then you got the four yellow ones. Rachel Carson, Andy Warhol, whoa. Roberto Clemente, an amazing baseball player, and Fort Duquesne, looking all out that way. Andy Warhol's actually from here. I guess that's why he gets a bridge named after him. There are so many runners clubs out here in the morning. I really like it. It's a fun thing to do when you get views like this. Do you ever know the feeling where you're like, oh my God, this is the shot. I found it. Oh my God, with the river, the bridge, the skyline in the background. This is stunning, absolutely stunning. And look where I am right at the ballpark. I love this. I love this view. There's a reason. Now I understand why the views from PNC and why people say this is the nicest stadium in Major League Baseball. I'm really finding this the coolest thing. I feel like most cities have rivers cutting through them. And a lot of times I'll look at them and be like, I'll be like, yeah, this is really cool. It's fun to walk through, but this one is something else. I'm just finding the Allegheny and everything about it. Just there's something special. There really, really is another stunning shot that I am just in love with. Absolutely in love with the scenery. I wonder if the Allegheny floods because look at where the sea level is right now and where the sidewalk is. Well, I guess this answers my question before about if this is flooding, because it is clearly flooding after, wasn't even much rain this morning, just a light drizzle. I'm very surprised, but in a great way, that I am loving this far more than I expected. I am so much more fascinated than I would have expected. It's all combining to be such a great trip and I am so, so glad I came. I really understand why there are so many people running right now, getting a nice early morning. I guess now it's late morning, but a nice jog exercising with getting just along the river, getting a nice cool breeze and seeing spectacular scenery. So right now, I am on the Roberto Clemente Bridge. And you may ask, who in the world is Roberto Clemente? Well, he played for that baseball team right there at PNC Park. He is one of the most humanitarian people to ever exist on the planet. Despite being one of the greatest baseball players ever, he provided so much time for assistance for underserved communities. That is actually why the MLB Humanitarian Award, the player that gives the most community service, is named the Roberto Clemente Award. He was actually killed in a plane crash on New Year's Eve when he was traveling to Nicaragua to provide support for earthquake victims there. He was, there were five people on the plane. All five were unfortunately killed upon takeoff as they were leaving from Puerto Rico. So in baseball, for a hitter to achieve 3,000 career hits, that is one of the greatest things, the greatest accomplishment that anyone can do. So he finished with exactly 3,000 hits, which is just unbelievable to think about. He got his 3,000th hit and then killed in the plane crash. Such a sad story. He was such a phenomenal player and a humanitarian. There's a reason PNC is uh, often considered the nicest stadium in the MLB. And it's because, so you see these seats right here, where not only can you see the field, but from those seats, yeah, you could see the river, you could see the city skyline, and you could see the Roberto Clemente Bridge. It really is, I wanna go to a game here 
so badly in the future. Definitely one of the greatest views. And not just baseball, but probably all the sports. Wait, so clearly I'm standing on the bridge right now and I can literally see where the pitcher and hitters stand in the infield. So hypothetically, I could be watching a game here without even having a ticket. Imagine how many people must be standing here to watch during playoff games. And obviously you can only see such a small part of the field, but the fact that you can see the hitter and the pitcher, that, I mean, like, I didn't even know that was, like, that was, this was here, like, wow, that is so cool. I love the way they have this set up too. All their numbers who are, they have retired set up on this grass hill right outside the stadium and of course situated right here this is awesome i am downtown right now as you can see and then along the street you see pnc park and you can even see the stands think about when a game's there and just from the street you're able to look and see it all the fans and everything happening since i'm literally at pnc why don't I walk down just about a half mile further, head to Akershore Stadium, formerly known as Heinz Field, where the Steelers play. And here we are now at Akershore Stadium, home of the Pittsburgh Steelers, the most successful team in NFL history. They have six Super Bowl titles, which is tied with the New England Patriots. Mike Tomlin has been the coach for the past 17 years and they have not had a losing season ever under him, which is crazy to think about. I love how Steelers is literally engraved in the steel of the gates. Oh, and also the Pitt Panthers play here too. ACC college football. Can't forget to mention Pitt. They literally just won the ACC title a few years back. And in case you were wondering why they were called the Steelers, come on, if it's not obvious already, because of the steel industry. Now this is awesome. Not the first ever football game, but the first pro football game. I bet all these restaurants around here get packed on Steelers game day. So now I've made it to all three stadiums here of all of the major sports teams. PPG Paints Arena, home of the Pittsburgh Penguins. And I'm going to a game later tonight here. So I am so excited. The Penguins have won three Stanley Cups in my lifetime, most notably going back to back in 2016 and 17. So here is Point State Park Fountain. So this is literally right on the edge of Pittsburgh. And normally this fountain would be going off. It'll be running during the spring, summer and fall, but because it's winter at this moment, it's not going and you are supposed to be getting a terrific view with skyline in the background and then the fountain right here. Another very interesting part is that you have the Monongahela, which is just to the south and you have the Allegheny to the north. They convolute at this very point and it forms the Ohio River. So I am actually standing at the very beginning of the Ohio River. I didn't know that until just now. That is really cool. This whole area is in the Fort Duquesne part. So I'm now at Fort Duquesne and uh, I expected there to like actually still be a fort, some remains, but now it is just kind of a grassy area. There is this cool little plaque that's right here. And uh, it's not really much, but it's still very, very historic. So what actually was Fort Duquesne and what was its historical significance? Well, it was a large scale British attack by General J. Forbes over 6,000 British troops. Fort Duquesne was a French fort and the British came in to have this assault on it, to take it over. It was during the French and India War which has slowly started to become known more as the French-American War. They've kind of removed that terminology of French and Indian War out. And uh, it actually had nothing to do with Americans because uh, first off, the United States was not a country yet. And it was just a proxy war on present day American soil, literally right where I am. Right where I am, you see where this plaque is. 
is where the center of the fort was. So a proxy war means it's a war between two countries, not on either of their soils. So they were fighting in the Americas. And it has great historical significance and really led to that French and American ally that took place during the American Revolution. It's also paved right now with this silver stone that's going around it, which marks the actual perimeter of where the fort used to be. It was built by the French in 1754, but yeah, just four years later, taken over and destroyed by the British in 1758. I love how they're waving the flag with 13 stars for the 13 colonies. At least we still have this historical structure. This was Fort Pitt Blockhouse and it was a part of the British structure that they built in 1764. So in 1772, shortly before the beginning of the American Revolution, the British abandoned this and really just used it as more of a trading post. There is a museum about the whole history of the area right behind me. Small museum, but if you're a history buff, it could be very fascinating. Right now, I'm about to hike up to Grand View Overlook. You're supposed to get this phenomenal view of the rivers of the city. It's supposed to be absolutely stunning. Most people will take the incline, which is pretty much like a tram that takes you from the ground up. But I think it's more fun to hike up to the top. Not bad, about 500 feet of elevation gain. So that's fine. And I am so excited for this. It's right across from the Manonhangela River. So you have to pretty much cross from downtown to get there. And it's right where the Ohio River starts. The view is, from the pictures I've seen, oh my God, it's sensational. So let's check it. Oh yeah, we hiked up to the top. Oh my God, I gotta admit, I was a little exhausted from that, but it was a great hike. It took me about two hours from where I started at Carnegie Mellon to get right here. This view, what can I say about this view? Oh my God, all the bridges and the Monongahela River and the Ohio River and the city landscape. It's remarkable, absolutely remarkable. How did it, how did I not know this was here originally? It took me to Google things to do in Pittsburgh to find this out. Wow, you need to check this out. Absolutely sensational. We see some hills, south side terrace area, around right over there, the river, and then this is the best part, the city landscape. And as I'm just walking along the terrace, the views just get even better. Views like these really give you a sense for everything in the city. You're able to see all the different industries, whether it's financial services with the large buildings there, or you have manufacturing right below me there, or you have the colleges, which are over there, and then athletics there, and the residential areas here. I love it. Way in the distance behind these hills, I came up across that blue grayish bridge and eventually made it all the way up here. If you don't want to walk, you can take the incline, which is this tram that goes along these tracks. Right now it's temporarily closed, but by the time you're here, it'll be back open. And you can really see from here how you have one river and two rivers and how they merge at that point at Fort Duquesne and form the beginning of the Ohio River. Another great thing is that you go to the top, you don't gotta walk all the way back. There's a free shuttle that takes you to the ground. Now I'm gonna explore Oakland, which is the college town area right by Pitt and Carnegie Mellon. It's supposed to be very, very elegant, very nice. It has a little bit of a college -y feel to it, but nothing crazy, because keep in mind, we're still right in the middle of Pittsburgh. Definitely has its own personality. I could really see why students tour 
either Pitt or Carnegie, and uh, they're like, wow, this is the school for me because of this area. Okay, so what I just found out about this absolutely blows my mind. So this is the main Pitt academic building, and it is the largest academic building in the entire Western Hemisphere. It's the second largest in the entire world. The only one that is taller is Moscow State University in Russia. 42 stories tall. Imagine having a class on the story 42. Oakland is a great place to be and I really recommend checking it out whether you are actually touring one of these two schools or you are just in the city as a, a tourist. So right now I'm in Southside Flats, which I didn't even know this place existed because I it was I found it alongside my walk up to that viewing platform. And this is a really cool and seemingly fun area. It has such a feel of Midwestern America. I'm thinking maybe along the lines of like a Nebraska small town where you have kind of like the saloons like if it was like the 1800s like the saloon and i don't know it just has such like a older feeling such it's i love it i love it. it doesn't even have to be nebraska it could be any rural industrial town in america whether it's in colorado wyoming montana ohio small towns like this i've really only had some experience with them so finding something like this is really cool considering only a 25 minute walk from downtown. This area stretches far going from one end of Southside Flats to the other probably is like a 20, 25 minute walk. I strongly recommend you coming here and uh, just seeing the atmosphere during like lunch hour. There are a lot of uh, different monuments and memorials everywhere and I absolutely love it. A lot of them are for the men and women who serve and protect our community. Like this one right here for law enforcement. It's, it's incredible to see. It really, you know, it brings out so much appreciation and it's letting everyone who has served know just how much they are appreciated. This has gotta be a joke. I have a friend from Pittsburgh who said that instead of them saying you all or y'all, they say yins here. I thought he was joking. What? As you walk into the outskirts, there are parts that definitely feel you know, much more industrial, much more blue collar. Yeah, the outskirts definitely has a blue collar feel. A lot of construction, a lot of manufacturing. You see the different plants and you see that, you know, they're still building up the infrastructure. As I'm leaving now and it's 6.30 a.m., I'm glad to be in the city at this time because I get to understand kind of like what type of people are going into work, what the city is like before it really starts to get going for the day. And it's busy right now. So you definitely feel that there's an energy at this time, which I really like. You know, it's nothing crazy, but it's not empty right now, which shows people getting ready for the business day. This is cool. The spot I'm at, the start of the Lewis and Clark expeditions. I didn't realize it started from here, right along the riverfront. There have been so many different trains, like the one that's going behind me right now, freight trains. I have literally seen about three within the past 10 minutes, and they're all like those 100 car ones. So that shows still the significance that they have here. One of the nice things about the skyline is that it's not overarching. So you're not in there and you don't feel overwhelmed by tall buildings. There's still about 20, 30 different buildings that are 20, 30 stories tall. But if you don't like a big city, this is such a great smaller city to go and enjoy because you still get that skyline but because again, they're not overwhelming and overarching, 
you can be able to almost like look through it too and see the different architecture and even see kind of like what's behind the skyline. So that wraps up my 48 hours in Pittsburgh. I hope you enjoyed. My final thoughts on the city, it's the waterfront itself is beautiful. I absolutely love that area going up to the observation deck with the incline and all of that extremely fun penguins game great atmosphere i think that if you're on specifically a midwest road trip this is a great place to stop and i would love to be back specifically for a baseball game that is what i'm looking forward to next time i'm here the downtown area is extremely walkable i mean everywhere you can get from place to place within probably like 15, 20 minute walk. And that really has to do with the sense that everything is very condensed and on the much smaller size. But remember, if you wanna make your way into Oakland, go to the incline, which I recommend both those things. That's gonna be much longer walk, probably more of a bus.